We welcome you in Jesus' name to our service on March the 5th at Small Heath Baptist Church. Bless you. Let's, um, is anybody here for the first time? Anybody here? Oh, one lady here for the first time. Anybody else? Okay. Just a 30 seconds, not a big bonanza, 30 seconds. Just greet each other before we greet the Lord. Greet each other and make sure we say hello to our guest here today as well. So just greet each other and then we'll uh, continue. Thank you. It's always an issue getting uh, letting people loose. <laughs> it's a bit like school. <laughs> As I understand. Okay. We welcome among us today Pastor Glenn and Maxine, uh, who is our moderator during the um, period in between pastors. What's the problem? You can't hear me properly. All right, okay. I'll hold the microphone to my mouth. Okay. We welcome Pastor Glenn and Maxine among us today. He is our moderator during the period of the, what I call interregnum, but between pastors. Pastoral vacancy. Thank you. Thank you for putting me right, Sharon. As ever. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's, but we're here to worship God. So let's just hold a moment of quiet when we reflect. We've greeted each other. Let's in our hearts welcome the Lord among us. Lord, just come among us, we pray. In the power of your Holy Spirit, come this morning and make yourself known to each and every person. Here we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. And today our worship team will help us and lead us into worship. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? It's great to be gathered together to praise Him, to worship Him, to be together, to be a family together. I'm going to read from Isaiah 43. Just as the music starts to play, the first song. Isaiah 43. Forget the former things. Spirit breaker. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it's 
springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Do you not perceive it? not perceive it, the Lord says. He's making a way where there seems to be no way. Amen? He's making a way. So let's come together and sing and pray and cry out. Spirit, break out for us walls to be broken down, for heaven to come down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So stand with us as we, we sing this first song, for the spirits to break out, to break our walls down, the barriers that we have put up. the disappointments that we have
I speak Jesus in the streets. I speak Jesus for my family. Who do you speak Jesus for? Speak Jesus. Speak Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, your holy and anointed, risen and exalted. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, your name is power.
Jesus. Jesus says, who do you say I am? He's holy. He's anointed. He's risen. Amen. He's exalted. He is like honey to our lips. He is power. He is healing. He is life. Hallelujah. So we shout Jesus for our families, for our friends, for our work colleagues, for anyone we meet on our way. We shout Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to ask um, if Malcolm can come and lead the prayers. church. Good morning. So nice to see you all here this morning. Let us pray. Dear Lord, here we are to worship. Here we are to say that you are our God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Lord, this time that we are in right here and right now. Dear Lord, we progress through life not knowing exactly where we're going sometimes, Lord. But Lord, you know our journey and our path. Dear Father, we put this week to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have been there. But Lord, that you are always there. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to watch us, to provide for us, and to protect us. Lord, how do we know that you are there? Because you said you never leave us, nor forsake us. Father, the days are, are difficult, Lord. But Lord, we stick to you, stick to the words that you have given us. And we thank you, Lord, that those words are here, and they are true, Lord. Dear Father, we want to put our congregation to you, Lord. We pray, Father, for those who are continuing to battle through bereavement. Lord, through those who are battling with illness. Lord, those who are battling with family circumstances family difficulties, employment difficulties. Lord, we pray, Father, Lord, for the physical and mental strain, Lord, of sometimes just being at work, Lord. How many of us can testify to that and how difficult that can be, Lord? Dear God, go before us. Make our path straight, Lord. Help us in those difficult times, those difficult meetings, those difficult conversations, Lord. Lord, when we have to just hold back just that little bit, Lord. Dear Father, but at the same time, we go in confidence and strength, Lord. Strength that you are behind us. Dear Lord, we think of our situation here at Small Eve Baptist Church. We thank you, Lord, that we have Pastor Glenn and Maxine with us this morning. We thank you, Lord, for them. We're praying for the time that we are in without a pastor here, Lord. But Lord, we give you thanks in all circumstances. We give you thanks, Lord, because you are our provider. Dear Lord, so many of us are 
ill. But Lord, we want to take this time just to lift up the names of those people who are on our hearts, in our minds, ever present, Lord, who we care for, Lord. Lord, so many have been ill. So many have passed, Lord. But Lord, we want to just lift up those names, Lord. Those names who are on our hearts, Lord. And if I can just ask you now just to lift up those names, Lord, as a congregation, Lord. Please call out, please, those names of the people who you'd want to pray for. Father for them. Lord, we pray for Mrs. Boyd. Lord, we pray for Gloria Ben Ray. We pray, Father, Lord, for so many people who are ill. But just be with them, Lord. So many people on our leaf, Lord, we can't call them right now. But Lord, just pray, Father, that you know who they are. Strengthen them, Lord. Be with them. And so, Lord, we just bring the rest of the service to you right now. Pray, Father, that your hand will continue to be on us here as we worship and continue to minister in your holy and most righteous name. Amen. Amen. Welcome to church. Good to see everybody today. Pastor Glenn is here. Do you want to come and say hello? <laughs> good to see you. Well, it's good to be with you today, and I bring greetings from City Road Baptist Church. I see you're celebrating 150 years. We are celebrating 100 years. But the important thing for us all to know is that there is only one body of Christ. And though we may be in different location, it is the same body of Christ. And above all, to recognize that he has called us to mission. He has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. And it is only as we collectively respond to that calling and the promise that we will experience the power of God among us. So Maxine is with me, Maxine, my wife. We've been together for a few years. Um, <laughs> But I, I met your, your oldest member, 101. Isn't that amazing? See what God can do? That's amazing. So I, I, I've asked God for 94 years, and he's given it to me. But seeing your, seeing your oldest member, I'm saying, Lord, can I have a bit more? Can I have a bit more? You know, ask God. God is amazing. He's a good father. Ask him, and he will give to you the desires of your heart. So my hope is to share the word that God has laid in my heart, and I pray that together we will journey onwards. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's rip through the other stuff. Um, the magazines are available today. If you didn't pick one up, they're available on the way out. There's also an AGM booklet if you weren't here last week for that. On the leaflet, we are collecting now. So the offer tree is being collected as it used to be. We're also collecting loose chains for Ben and his work in Uganda. That will happen on the fourth Sunday of the month like it always happened. So the collection at the back there is now uh, chocolate biscuits for Crossroads and baby bank stuff.
can go there. If you do bring some change for Ben, if you've got bags of coins and you bring them in on any week, if you just let me have them, I can make sure they get in the right place. But the collection will be on the fourth Sunday of the month. Now I'm told that Joan Rose is having a prayer meeting for her husband. You remember Joan who used to come here. Uh, she's having a prayer meeting for her husband on Tuesday uh, at Unity House in Mosley at 7 o'clock. Um, Fern is the person to talk to if you want any more information about that. Okay, so on the back of the leaflet, just some things to raise, lots going on. Crossroads team are out on Thursday, uh, preparing the sandwiches and then feeding the homeless in the evening. Please continue to support that work. Thanks to everybody for the coffee morning yesterday, yeah? Some uh, lonely and hungry people uh, we met again yesterday who come every time we do that. So thank you again to all those people that were able to help and support that. On the inside, is the dates for your diary about our 150th anniversary celebration. The dates and the times are there. On the 24th of June, we're doing an entertainment evening. Florence is doing a play. She would like some actors to go and help her. The rehearsals will start on Monday the 20th of March. Please, if you're available to be in that, Florence would love to hear from you. Uh, please go and talk to her, let her know, encourage her that you are available to be part of that. Then there's the big weekend uh, and a celebration meal in September. Uh, we are looking to collect photographs, especially wedding photographs, but not only. We've got some great stuff, old photos from uh, the front of the old church um, wedding stuff, terrific. Let us have them. Talk to Rob and Norma. Uh, talk to me and we can see how we can get copies of that from you. So Lorna, do you want to talk about briefly about the cultural evening on the 25th? my voice is going right my other half joy yes. <laughs> partner in crime is not here so it's left to me for today <clears throat> it's just to it's just to remind you all that on the 25th of this month the last Saturday we're having a cultural evening <clears throat> we're having a cultural evening here well what it is we're looking at starting it maybe a bit earlier though it says six o'clock we want to try and start about four-ish, just to try and get the children and the families involved. I know we will be going on later, so if you don't object, please, although it says six. Any objections to us starting us early, about four? Because we're going to have music, food, entertainment, and we just want families to be involved. And we think they will get the children out earlier so they can get them home. It will be going on six, probably finish nine, ten o'clock. So it will still be here. Come, come to represent your cultures. Right now, I found there are nine different um, countries within this congregation, which I wasn't aware of. I thought it was just three groups. But there's nine. So come, come in your costume, come in whatever, as long as it's decent. <laughs> Please, come and share with us and let's have fun. And it will be a good night. God will be in the midst of it all. Thank you all. Thank you, Lorna. Ruby, come, let's quickly do this. You can see my um, 150th anniversary polo shirt. Yes. Here's Ruby in our 150th anniversary sweatshirt. So we have some of these. There we go. Good to try. Yes, I'm so pleased you did it all over at the end of that. So, um, these are insane. You want my twelve? Yeah. Hold the microphone. These are insane. Hold the 
yes. sweatshirt at 29 pounds and the t-shirt at 26. Um, just place an order with me, any size you want we can do it. Any colours? I'm wearing the red. I'm wearing red. We've got grey, we've got navy, we've got green, we've got um, black. No. Now these are these two things we could get. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. And I haven't got any animal print. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we've got a dozen or so of these, we can get others, we can, Ruby's got a colour chart and a size chart. Um, there were some hoodies, weren't there, Ruby? So that's, we could yes. even do that. They have, so we've got, we can get all of this stuff. Um, and the prices include a couple of pounds towards fundraising for the church as well. So thank you all for that. You can have a look at them. Ruby's bought the ones we've got, which you can buy, or we can order through Ruby as well. So. Where's Maggie gone? No, I'm not talking to you. Oh, there, Maggie. <laughs> it's Maggie's birthday on Tuesday. Happy birthday for Tuesday. All under control, Ken? You didn't know until I just told you. Okay. Morrison's is open, Ken, if you need to pop over to that. It will be Layla's birthday on Saturday. How old will you be, Layla? How many? Eleven. Okay on Saturday. Good. Is it all under control? Excellent. That's a good answer. Well done. Have a great time. So we're going to do um, happy birthday. Janice, start me off, do you think? Thank you. Okay, we're going to have our offering collected by Lloyd's new trainee, Stewards. Nearly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Layla's doing the prayer. Great. You have to keep doing this because you're so good at it. You see, that's the problem.
much off, thank you. Okay, so children are off to Sunday school, off you go. Young people, Janice, in or out? In, young people? Okay. Okay, children off to Sunday school, that's great. Have a good time. Pastor Glenn, come and share the word with us today. Let's just be still for a moment. I wonder whether the group could just sing Faithful One before I speak. Faithful One. I have turned it on. Yes, I am on. So you need to control me down there. That's better. Good. Be strong 
and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do, do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. He says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Isn't that a wonderful promise? My brothers, my sisters, God has called us to journey with him. God has a plan for his people. And every step of the way, God knows exactly what will happen. However, he has chosen to work through us. You are in this period of your journey. Your past minister has been called aside and now here you are waiting, looking, and searching for God. It is interesting that God walk at the pace that we are prepared to walk. And if we're prepared to walk obediently with God, he will take us to places that will amaze us. And I want to share with you, as I, as I talk about, oh, what should I bring this morning? I felt this is the word for you, stepping out in faith whether individually or collectively, God is calling you to step out in faith, to step out from the shadows and to move forward with him. But what does it actually mean to step out in faith? We hear words, nice words. For instance, when we were singing, I speak Jesus. What do you think that means? Do you think you should go around to saying Jesus, Jesus? Do you think that's what it means? It doesn't mean that. You have to go back to his origin. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. That's who Jesus is, the living Word of God. So you must speak the living Word of God into every situation. And when you know the Word of God and you speak it with confidence and faith, mountains will be moved. Things will begin to change. You see, it's not about us. It's about God. And God has given us what we need to do his work. So when I say, I speak Jesus for my family, you know, those challenging times, come on, you don't physically have to go on your knee if you want to. You speak in faith and say, Lord, I give it to you. Your word declares. Not that you need to remember, remind God what he says, but you need to remember what God's word says so you can trust in it and proclaim it. Now, you see, God reminded Joshua that he had spoken to Moses. You see, when God brought the children out of Egypt, it was never his intention that they should be wandering for 40 years in the wilderness. Never. He intended them to get through and to enter the promised land. But their lack of faith in God's ability to do what he said he would do, even though they saw what he did, how he brought them out of Egypt, meant they spent all those years in the wilderness. And those who lacked faith, they didn't actually enter into the promised land, only those who truly believed. Faith is about believing God, believing what he says, not knowing, but trusting that what he says to you is true, and he's able to enable you to go through it and to fulfill that plan. But let me say to you this, is it morning still? Yes, it is morning, a few more minutes to go. In order for us or for anyone to step out in faith, you must first receive the call. It is no good saying, okay, making your own plans, I'm going to do this for God or that for God. If God doesn't ask you to do it, there's no point. You're just doing your own thing. Hear the voice of God, and that voice is quite gentle, and he speaks with clarity, and he doesn't speak forever, just a sentence or two. And once you've done this, he will tell you what the next step is, and you move forward. Now you're in interregnum, 
say, without a, a leader. And here is an opportunity for you to seek the Lord. Lord, what is it you want to do among us, with us? Is he wanting to raise someone up from your midst to be your leader? Or is he asking you to look outside? You're only going to know if you ask him, if you seek him, he will tell you what his will is. Because you know something? This is God's church. Let me clarify, I'm, I'm raising my hand. This is not the church. This is just the building. We, the people of God, we are the church. This is where the church meets. And we are the church of God. You see, the death of Moses ushered in a new era. I tell you something, it's no easy thing to be in leadership. I've been in leadership now for 40 years. And it's no easy thing. But that which is, enables one to go forward is knowing that God is with you. And when you listen to what God is saying, irrespective of what other voices are saying, you can go with confidence. Don't make it a selfish thing. Make it a God thing. And when you make it a God thing, everything else will flow together. You will have challenges. So Moses' death ushered in a new era. Joshua was one of those who went out to spy the land and said, We can do it. We can do it. Out of 12 spies who went, only two believed it was possible. They said, Oh man, it's a good place, but no, 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 we can't do it. Do you have, do you know anyone who first and foremost, the moment there is something to be done, they look at the problems first. The first thing you need to know, has God called us to do this? And remember this, if God has called you, not only will he enable you, he will empower you and it will be accomplished. Because the word of God will never come back void. It will go forth and bring forth what God has said. It will. But God has chosen to work with us and in us and through us. God was about to do a new thing. And he called Joshua to step out in faith. Joshua, are you ready? And it was quite clear what God says to him. He says to Joshua, My servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan. And I want to tell you that at that time, the Jordan was in flood. And when the Jordan is in flood, at the place where they were, it is a huge river. In 2017, I baptized some folks in the River Jordan. And next year, we're planning to go back to Israel for a, a trip in February. If you'd like to go with us, then you can, you can have a conversation later on. And it's an amazing experience to go to the Holy Land and to see the things that you've read about in the Word. He says, I'm calling you to go across. And I want to ask this question right here before I pursue any further. Have you received the call of God to do something for Him, but something is standing in the way, and you have to get over it, or get through it? And because of that thing, you're still on the other side of what God is requiring of you. The moment God has called you to do something, the enemy is always trying to rob you of that opportunity, out of that blessing. And there will always be obstacles, always. But remember, my sisters, my brothers, when you go in faith in the Word of God and you overcome the obstacles, you come to realize that oh, this is real. The Christian life is in the living, which is challenging, but that's where you find reality. Someone was saying, uh, in fact, yesterday morning we had a prayer meeting and one of our members was saying that she was having a conversation with someone who was seeking and they said, uh, the church is just filled with hypocrites. And what we don't often realize, the church is like a hospital. They are, we're, they are sick people. Some are, you know, getting better. We're not here because we're perfect. We're here because we recognize our need and come to God. And God is doing the work in us and through us. And we must be the first to acknowledge I'm not yet what a God intended me to be, but I'm on my journey. 
And if you're going to become more like God, there needs to be a time of reflection. When you hear the word of God, you need to bring yourself up to it and say, how do I fit into this? Do I look, am I looking more like Jesus? Or am I still the same person I was when I said yes? God is wanting to do something new. And he's looking for those. You remember Gideon? Where did God see Gideon? Joshua. God is looking for those who are prepared to stand out and to say, yes, Lord, I will go with you. He's looking for individuals and he's looking for the collective to say, we will go, we will follow you. Speak your word and we will follow you, Lord. Leading can be very challenging, but if you're going to lead, you need to have clarity. You need to have confidence and you need to have faith in the task so you can communicate this clearly and inspire others to walk with you on the journey. Joshua's call was not something overnight. Joshua's faith didn't go away because of the years, even though he was much older. His faith grew in God and he trusted God's ability to do what he said he would do. But still, the obstacle was there. The people, the challenges were still there. But Joshua knew that God was able to do what he said he would do. They had to go into the land of Canaan in order to possess the inheritance that God had promised. They had, in order to realize their goal, they had to enter the promised land. What are your hopes and aspirations for Small Heath Baptist Church as a people, as a community? Are you feeling shut in by you know, the number of different religions round about you? Or do you believe that you are indeed the light that will shine forth, that in fact you have the answer, that Jesus is indeed the answer, the living word of God manifest? John said, the and made his dwelling among us. We have seen it. We have experienced the power of the word of God. I want to say to you, you have nothing to be afraid of. God knew you would be here at this time, and he knew what the name of the community would be, and he has placed you here at this time for a purpose. Now, seeking that purpose, and then embarking on the journey, to make it a reality is something that, as a fellowship, you have to do together. The river, as I said, was overflowing at the time. And it looked formidable. Are there any formidable obstacles in your way at the present moment? of achieving what you believe God is wanting to give to you? What did Paul said? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because it's not about me, it's not by my might or my strength, but by the Spirit of God. It's about maintaining the unity of the Spirit as we journey together by allowing the fragrance of God's grace and mercy to be experienced by those who may walk through this building or by those who may encounter you wherever God has placed you. So the word of God is alive in you. So you are speaking Jesus without even saying what? The way you are engaging with the world. In fact, nothing but obstacles stood in the way of the Israelites in order to enter the promised land. However, if this venture was to succeed, it would require every bit of faith in the God who called and spoke, in Joshua commitment and confidence in God's ability to keep the people together, and in the people's confidence in Joshua as he led them and hearing what Yahweh was saying to them. It would require every bit of energy. 
and every bit of determination. You know, when you make a decision, there's a song which we sometimes sing, and it may seem glib, but if you hear the truth, it says, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I won't turn back. Whenever you come to an obstacle, because you have made that decision, the Spirit of God will remind you that you have made a decision and encourages you to go forward. So when you hear the word of God and you say yes, says, that's how my soul says yes. When you hear the word of God, say yes. No, there will be obstacles, but in the moment that you need the hand of God to help you, he will be there. And your faith will be strengthened and you'll be standing on your own faith ground because you won't be saying, well, someone told me I have experienced, I have seen the Lord in the midst of the challenges. So every inch of faith and energy and determination that Joshua could muster, it was needed. The other thing is, it, it, it was very taxing for Joshua. In every possible way, it was taxing because there were those, just like when they came out of the, you know, out of Egypt, and they, and they wanted to go back to Egypt. How many of you want your minister to come back who was here before? That's gone well. How many of you want to stay as you are? Because you're comfortable. Let me say to you, the reality of the life of faith has to do with the, our consistent walk with God as he revealed his word to us. And some of us like to know where we're going before we're prepared to go. No. But if you knew where God might want to take you, you would never go. But if you knew the God who is with you, you can walk with him in confidence and say, Lord, I'm going to hold on to you. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley which is overshadowed by death, I will not be afraid because you are with me. You know that God is with you? God is with you. He surely is with you. 150 years, those of our forefathers who heard the message and established the work here in this community, and all those who have heard and responded on our own glory, the same God is with you, and God's not finished yet. God's not finished. He has much to do. You see, they had to get through the Jordan. Why? Because it was their calling. Their calling was to get through the Jordan in order to possess the land that God had for them. So what is God calling Small Hill Baptist Church to do? Think for a moment. Some of you have been here. I wonder, uh, my brother is, who's 101, how long have you been here, brother? How long have you been a member here at Small Hill Baptist Church? Okay, we can, I can hear later, but some of you have been here, you know, from maybe a couple hundred years ago or something like that. <laughs> do you know what God is calling the church to do? Have you got a sense of what you should be doing? Because you see, it's out of the sense of what God is wanting to do, that that will fall and guide you as to what needs to be done. God said to Joshua, get ready. What do you need to do to be ready to move into where God wants you to be? What is it you need to do to realize the goal that God has for you? There's a time to move. There's a time to be still. It says in verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. And death symbolizes the end of one period and the opportunity for new life. And those who are left behind were left behind to pick up the pieces and to run. He says, now then, you, and this collective you, is not, you know, is, he was speaking to Joshua, but I speak to you, you, the people of God, here in Small Heath Baptist Church. You have to sense what God is saying, pick it up, and say, come on now, let's get ready. Let's do what is necessary so we can move forward into a new period. As we seek to call a new leader, let's move forward and be ready for what God has for us to do. 
I ask before I ask again about you know what Jordan is it that you have to cross individually and collectively this is a time for you to be united this is a time for you to you know reflect the joy of the Lord this is a time for, for your expectations to be raised, not to be dampened because somehow you may feel disillusioned. But it's a time to ex expect good things, to see new fruits, new shoots coming forth. It's a time for the gifts that are made, have laid latent for many years in many of you to come to the fore and to say, here is an opportunity for you to use those God-given gifts for the good of the kingdom of God. I use the word battle advisedly because so often when you hear the word battle, you know, you think, okay, we need to fist the cuffs here. One battle that we need to fight is the battle of maintaining the unity of the spirit. And sometimes the way we fight the battle is by saying nothing. There are times someone may have said something to you and you could have responded in a way in which, but if you do that, a fire will be kindled. And before you know it, it is out of control. There are times when you just need to come alongside someone and support them. I was having a conversation yesterday with someone and um, it was only after, you know, stepping away I understood what the problem was. And we're using the word password. And for that person, if something has a password, then there is something that needs to be protected. But actually it was only an access code. So you can gain access. But because the person thought, you know, there was something to be protected, they were adamant, no, we can't do this. And there are times, you know what the enemy does? He, he, he confuses our, 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 our language. So we don't understand what someone is seeking to communicate. And it's important for us to get to understand each other. And if we know the person and understand one another, though they may say or may even behave in a particular way, we will come to the realization that that was not really their intention. And I'm going to allow the peace of God to reign in my heart. As I conclude this morning, pursuing your calling will require active faith that will enable you to stay the course when things are difficult. When things are challenging, because they will. There will be challenges is ahead of you. There are times when you'll feel like giving up and walking away. But that's not will be that's, that will not be God telling you to do that. You know what the enemy does? He tries to scatter us and to weaken the body. But stand together and say, I am determined. To see God way. Now, if God tells you to move, that's a separate thing. But if he doesn't tell you to move, don't move. In verse 3 of the reading I read to you, he said, I will give you every place where you set your foot. Now, if you know what God's plan is and his purposes and where he's taking you, you will go in the right direction. So if you need resources, you say, Lord, we need resources. Now, we're going to step out of faith, believe that you're going to provide, whether it is financial or human, physical resources you need, or access to various things, God will give it to you. Why? Because you're seeking to accomplish the will of God. So every place where you are able to stand faithfully, confidently, God will give it to you. What you can call upon, he will give it to you. One of the things that asking God for 94 years has done for me, whenever I go on a plane, I have folks around me, I say, you don't need to relax, to worry, this plane is not going to crash because I'm on this plane. Because I know, I asked God, it took a while for him to confirm that he's given me these 94 years. And one thing happened, um, uh, six years ago I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And I said, Lord, how, how does this fit into the scheme? But now, you know, I'm perfectly, you've had the operation and I'm perfectly fine. But what it's done for me, I, I just speak to men, I don't even ask them their name. And I realized I was talking to them more about this than about Christ and I had to balance it out. I, any man I see in the street, I would just speak to them directly. I don't even ask them their name. What are you doing about X, Y, Z? It's your responsibility. 
And I want to say to you this morning, if you have not made a response to the call of God, to the word of God, it is your responsibility. Because God has done everything that is necessary for salvation. Everything. But you have to step in and claim it. God has provided all that you need for the next journey. But you have to per perceive it, take hold of it, and go for it. It takes courage. Ask, seek, knock. Engage in that relationship with God, that close relationship, so you can sense his will and know where he wants to take you. The fact that he says, I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses, he says, know this, that he's going to be there with you. It will take courage to face the giants you will face on your way to securing the promises of God. Because you could say the enemy, what he does, he put guards outside those doors. But when you know who you are and you speak in the name of Jesus, they have to crumble. Remember the word says, the gates of hell cannot stand against the church. And that's why it's so important for you, to know, for you to know what the word of God says. Because the word of God is so important as I want to come unto. It will tax you in every possible way, but it must be done. And in your effort to achieve the will of God, be gentle with one another. Watch your words. Because as the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, don't use it to kill anyone. Use it to protect and to lift up. And remember, you're part of the body of Christ. Seek to build a good community where love is experienced, genuine love. In verse 5, it says, No one will be able to stand against you in all your days. What it means is that the, the challenges that will come, they will not be able to overcome you or defeat you because I'll be there. So every fight you enter into, enter in the knowledge that you have already won the fight. And all you have to do is to claim the prize. And you'll be amazed. And you'll say, Lord, thank you. You know what will happen? The next fight, you'll be looking for the biggest fight because you know you need you are already a it. And say, Satan, bring it on. Because my God is able, and my God can. However, as human beings, since we're still in this world, you know, we're, we, are, we, are, we, are, we have the divine residing in us, but so often the human elements, the things we see with our eyes, the things we experience around us, cause us to sometimes take our eyes of God. So in verse 6 and verse 7, he says, Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Why, did it was, why do you think it was necessary for God to say this? Be strong and courageous. You see, he knows that you will face situations where you will want to give up. You will face things that will strike fear in your heart. But you have to allow faith to come. David and Goliath. David and the lion and the bear. Those things could have caused David to run away, but no, he, came, he went forth in the name of God. So be strong as you go forward. Speak the word of truth. Speak love. Speak grace. He says, because you will lead these people to inherit the land, I saw to their ancestors. Then he says, be strong and very courageous in verse 7. But this is the point I want just for a moment to explore with you. In verse 7 he says, be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Now if we move forward, when one of the Pharisees spoke to Jesus, he says, now what, what, what are the greatest commandments? He says, love God with your entirety and your neighbor as yourself. And if you want to unpack that as to what does this mean to love God and to love one another? Within the context of the story and in the context of our journey, it's important for us to make sure that the Word of God is alive, that we're not stepping over or stepping on, but we are walking together with one another. It's important for us to be reminded as to how we should deal with situations and how we should respond. And here in, in verse 7, as verse, it says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. When you read the word and you know what the word of God says, you can speak the word of God into situation. 
and it does amazing things. But if you don't know it, you won't know how to speak it. And when the enemy twists it and uses it against you, you don't know how to correct it. And no one can do this for you. Jesus said, humanity lives not by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So individually, we have to feast upon that and allow it to change our minds. So we are transformed into the image of God. When I say the image, I mean being responding to things in a, in a reflex or in a considered way, just as God would through Christ Jesus. But it has to be in us. He says, meditate on it, day and night. There is no time when you should not be thinking and reflecting upon the word of God, he says. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. You know when a when problem comes, how we try to, to sort them out ourselves? You know, the other day I, I realized, goodness me, I, I've arrived at the age of retirement and it just happened uh, just like that. And then I was thinking, you know, you know, I was a jeweler before I came into the ministry and I, I had my plan to set up a jewelry business and, and God called me and I had a, an argument with God. I said, why did you wait until now? Why did you call me before? Okay, Lord, I could do it on the side. And this is no. And now at the end of my, my time, well, let's say the end, I'm, I'm thinking now, mm -hmm, maybe I could, you know, do this, do that, do the other. And, and then I stopped and reflected. I said, Lord, you have provided for me all these years. You've never let me down. What? I gave my life to you, my whole life. Why do I want to go on to something else? And I have to refocus myself. I said, all my life, whatever it is, whatever form it takes, will be to serve God. As he calls me, I won't be looking to do something else. But in whatever capacity to serve him fully. I had to come back to the word. Come back to his faithfulness and say, yes, Lord. The work never stops. There's no retirement. There's service always in the kingdom of God. He says, keep the word of God near to you. And he says, this is where you find prosperity, he says. Be careful to obey everything, he says. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So, youngsters, well, those of you who are younger, those of you who are maybe in the midst of your career and thinking, what direction should I go? In Proverbs, it tells us in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your part. Not write up your plan and say, stamp this, Lord. No, no, no. Come with an empty sheet. Say, so, Lord, what do you require of me? And he will give you direction. He says, by listening to the word of God, obeying it and walking in it, that's where you find prosperity and success. And as you seek a new leader, listen to the Lord. Or be obedient to him. And that's where you will find not only the will of God, but the person that God is calling to take you on the next phase of the journey. <clears throat> I conclude then. If you go forward depending fully in God, he will provide everything you need to succeed. You don't have to go looking for it. Because he already knows what you need. Don't be afraid. But be courageous. And look for the answer in all of the situation. Take the first step. Or the second. And I conclude with verse 9. <clears throat> now why did he say, have I not commanded you? Because, yes, they heard it. And they began the journey, but they lagged behind. And he had to remind his people that I have commanded you, and with that command comes all that you need to do, fulfill the task I'm asking of you. Have I not commanded you, he said, be strong and courageous. <clears throat> do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. You know, it's, it's interesting. The Word of God tells us we should not be afraid, and the other says, well, you know, I have to be afraid. Why? The Word of God says, don't worry, and says, well, you know, I worry about lots of things. If you're doing the, the opposite of what God tells you, how can you be, expect to enjoy the peace of God? Because instead of trusting in God, you're trusting in your own rational. 
and your own resources. Look to God. He says, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Be excited, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, that God has good things in store for you, and he wants to take you to new places. May he take his word and, and as it were, distribute it accordingly. And may we hear what God is saying to us individually and collectively, so we may go on to be what God intended us to be at this time in this place. May God bless you. Let's pray for you. God of grace and God of mercy, your call to us is clear to journey with you. We thank you that it is your church. We ask for your forgiveness when we fail to hear your call and we explore our own ideas and our own thoughts and our own plans. Father, I thank you that you have been so faithful to your body here in Small Heath, that you have called them, blessed them, enabled them, supported them, and you are still here, the same God. And your vision and your mission hasn't changed. I pray, Father, that each one will hear what you have to say to them and be willing to say, yes, Lord. And Father, for those who've been in the periphery for so, so many years, I pray you will help them to hear your call to them. And they will know that you are calling them first and foremost into relationship. And with that call comes not only a relationship, but the opportunity to be involved in the work that you're seeking to do. So hear our prayers, Lord, and speak clearly to us so we may know it is you. For we ask these things for your glory and your kingdom's sake. Amen. Bless the Lord. Just before we move into communion, um, thank you, Pastor Glenn. Powerful message. Uh, we have three new members that we're going to welcome in, which is brilliant. So if Elaine, Marva and Yvonne could come forward just briefly, we won't keep you, we won't embarrass you, just come forward for me. <laughs> Baptised in, uh, by Pastor Richard, yeah. and regular members people who come regularly, we just are so pleased that you um, are joining us as members. We haven't got any membership certificates, but I've written cards for you, and we'll sort that out later. Right. Maggie's going to take a photo. Okay, okay. That's one card. Okay. Lord, just bless these three women, we pray, as they become members of our fellowship. And we thank you for them. We pray for them, that you, you maintain their faith, you develop their faith, and they become, as they are already, important members of this community. We praise your name for these, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our precious time as we come to remember what God has done for us, the ultimate price He paid for us. And we get to have a prayer before we, we enter into communion. So, can I ask the person who's praying to come and pray now, please? than the power of men and your love are more lasting. Mm -hmm. Thank you Lord for keeping us safe throughout the times of uncertainty that is going on in the world today and for keeping us free and not be afraid. Oh Lord, we don't know what you have in store for us today. 
only that you never cease to only that your case never ceases. Strengthen us, Lord, and uh, and <coughs> restore us with your love. Lord, we acknowledge that your Son, Jesus Christ, bore all our sins, and we believe that his body was broken and that his blood was shed for us on the cross. Cleanse us today as we share communion together. Bless the bread and the wine. This I ask in your precious name. Amen. same night in which Jesus was betrayed. After giving thanks, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is broken for me. As often as you do this, do so in remembrance of me. The body represents the living word. God breaks his word in bite size for us to ingest. So let's take the bread as a symbol of the broken body of Christ and let's eat it together as a sign of the body that has been broken. Let's eat it together. Broken for me, broken for all. Your purpose, Lord Jesus, was to make it possible for all of humanity to come back into fellowship with the Almighty. We thank you for your willingness to go all the way to Calvary, and there you lay down your life. As we receive the bread and wine as symbols of that great sacrifice, we pray that we too will be willing to sacrifice, that others might come to fight. We thank you for this time of gathering in this way and remembering. We pray that we will live faithful lives that reflect your sacrifice. We give you glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. I think the worship leaders get the power to lead us at this time.
Thank you, Pastor Glenn, for your word today, a, a, a word for us to reflect on, to respond to. Uh, I think this, this uh, next psalm I will offer up my life is a good start in our reflection of what we've heard today. I will offer up my life in spirit and truth pouring out the oil of love as my worship to you. So please let us stand as we sing this, this final song.
Sorry, if I can hear me, sorry, I was just saying my sister in Jamaica, two of my brothers and my sister just lost their mom here in England, but she's rapidly gone, in the past few months, gone blind in one eye, and her other eye, she can just see shapes out of. The, the operation is really expensive, and her daughter has found the money to do the one eye at the end of this month, but I think it's all become too much for her. I mean, in Jamaica, you don't have, it's not easy to be blind, and she's practically blind now. But it's just that two days ago, she, I think she's overcome and she's asking to die. She can't cope with it anymore and it's burdening all of us as a family, her daughter and myself. And today has been difficult. And so I would really appreciate prayer for her and as a family, please. If we could, someone could do that, I'd be grateful. Okay, so if... Uh some members of the ministry team can come and pray. So as the ministry team are praying, uh, anyone else that wants to pray uh, for Shannon, the family, um, we will say the grace um, as um, they continue to pray. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and evermore. Amen. Amen. Just be mindful of prayer going on as we uh, lead to have your teas and your coffee. So if anybody else uh, wants prayer as well, the ministry team are here to pray for you.